Hello, welcome to this section of Circuit Analysis Tutor. We're going to continue working with dealing with capacitors in this problem that we have on the board. And so what we have are two capacitors, one of them is two microfarads, one of them is eight microfarads. These capacitors have initial conditions at time zero. This one's charged up to five volts in this orientation, minus to plus. This guy's charged up to 25 volts in this orientation from plus to minus. Now, of course, each one of these voltages uh, exist across this guy at time zero. Those are the initial conditions. Now at time zero, this switch closes, all right? And then from that moment on, we know that the current flowing in this circuit, which is actually going this direction, I, all right? We know that the current I is 800 times E to the minus 25 T, and that is in the units of microamps, so very small current. All right? So when we close that switch, we have measured the current. We know the current's going that direction with this uh, expression, and this is all dumping into a black box. We don't know what's in the black box. There could be uh, you know, capacitors in, in there or inductors in there. There could be monkeys or seagulls in there. I mean, we have no idea. All we know is it's closed up, the current goes in there. We don't really care what's inside the black box. What we're asked to do, we're gonna have several parts of this question. The first part is find V naught of T, this guy, this voltage across the black box, as T goes to zero. Now notice though, that V naught is defined to be negative to positive. This kind of thing happens all the time in circuits. It will be given a circuit, they'll draw the voltages everywhere, and then you have to find out what the voltages are. Now, if you don't know what's in the black box, you have no idea if the voltage is really negative to positive or positive to negative. You don't know, but you have to make some assumption, right? So in this drawing, in this problem, whoever's giving you this problem has made an assumption. They're saying, hey, V naught, the voltage across this black box is oriented like this. You may get a positive answer for V naught. That means that the orientation that you drew was correct. You might get a negative answer for V naught, and that just means that the, the orientation for V naught was actually backwards from what you had drawn. So don't stress out too much about the orientations. You can see the orientation of the voltages across these capacitors, V1 of T and V2 of T, are kind of weird too. Um, but you kind of just have to take it all um, as a given, and, and sometimes you'll get negative answers and sometimes you won't. So let's do several parts of this problem. The first problem is find V naught of T as a function of time. Now, we know that we have these capacitors. We know that we have the current flowing uh, in this leg. So we know that this current I is, is flowing through both of these capacitors because these capacitors are in series with one another. We know that the current is decaying. That makes sense to us because these capacitors were charged up. It's probably bleeding off its charge. Eventually all the, you know, uh, when, as T goes to infinity, everything will be done, and, and these voltages will all settle out with, to some final value. Um, but in the interim, everything's flowing into this black box. The current is decaying like this. So if we want to find V naught, okay, the voltage across this is really going to be the sum of the voltages across this capacitor, right? The sum of the voltages across both of these capacitors. Since we know the voltage going through this capacitor, I'm sorry, the current going through this capacitor, and we also know the voltage, the current going through this capacitor, and we also know the initial conditions, we could integrate and find V of T across this capacitor and V of T across this capacitor, and we could add them together. That's, that's fine. But you have to do two sets of integrations to do that, because to find the voltage across a capacitor, you have to integrate the current flowing through it. So I would really rather not do that twice, unless I really have to. But we notice that this is basically, these are in series. So I should be able to find an equivalent capacitance, CEQ, equivalent capacitance. And for capacitors, we can use, since it's 